1.1. Hi, are you on the flight to Boston at 10.20? Yes, I am. Are you on the same flight? Yeah, my name's Paula, by the way. Hi, Paula. I'm Tom. It's nice to meet you. Hello, Paula. I'm Jenny. Hi, Jenny. It's nice to meet you. Sorry, what's your name? My name's Tomasz, but I prefer to be called Tom. Anyway, pleased to meet you, Jenny. I'm sure I've flown with you before, Paula, but I can't remember what trip we did together. Yes, I feel I know you too. We'd better go now. The shuttle is waiting and our briefing starts in ten minutes. One point two. Good morning, Catherine. How are you today? Fine, thanks, Tom. How about you? Have you had some good trips recently? Yes, I had a great roster last month, and I've just got back from a four-day Hong Kong trip. The flight was really busy, but I had a fantastic team. Are you looking forward to going to Boston? Definitely. The shops are fantastic there, mind you. I was in a bit of a panic last night. I couldn't find my passport. It took me ages to find it. I thought I was going to have to come off this flight. I'm glad you found it. I was looking forward to working with you again, as it's my first trip to Boston. By the way, this is Paula. Oh, we've met before. Hello, Catherine. How are you? Very well, thanks. It's nice to see you again. This is Jenny. Hi, Jenny. Hi there, Catherine. Paula, I've just remembered which trip we did together. It was to Madrid back in June. Oh, that's right. How could I forget? It was a really turbulent flight, wasn't it? Didn't you drop a full drinks tray on that very smartly dressed businessman, and he went a bit crazy? Wow. Yes, you have a good memory. Anyway, how are you? Not too bad now. I've been off sick for a week, so it's great to be back flying. In fact, I think you and Tom are part of my team today. One point three. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to DZ one hundred and seven flight to Boston. For those who haven't flown with me before, my name's Ted. I'm your purser in charge of today's flight. I'd also like to introduce you to your cabin supervisors. Catherine Larson is going to be in charge of business today, and Leila Ahmed is in charge of economy. Hello, everyone. Hi, everyone. It's nice to see some new and familiar faces. Can I just check that everyone has got their working positions and door responsibilities? Yes. And I see we have a new long haul crew member joining us today, Yuta Weber. Welcome to long haul, Yuta. You'll be working with Leila and Hamel. So if you're unsure of any of your responsibilities, I'm sure they'll be glad to help you out. Thanks. I'm really excited about my first long haul flight. Hi, Yuta. I'm Leila, the FA7 galley leader. I'll be sitting at door four left, working with you and Hemel. When we get on board, if you need any help with your pre-takeoff duties or stowage areas, just let us know. Thank you very much. Okay. Before I give you any flight details. One point four. My name is Paula. Pleased to meet you. Hi there. I'm Tom. Sorry. What's your name? Excuse me. Could you tell me your name, please? This is my colleague, Catherine. This is Hemel. Hello again. How are you? Fine, thanks. And you? How's it going? Very well, thanks. How are you? Not too bad. Hi there. Hi. One point five.
Good morning, everyone. My name is Kurt Ostermeyer, and I'm your captain today. This is my first officer, Rick Schulz. You'll be pleased to hear that we've got a really quick flight time today of 9 hours 20 minutes, and apparently the weather in Boston is good but cold. Rick, uh, you wanted a word about the weather during the flight. Yes, thanks. I just wanted to warn the crew of some moderate turbulence during flight. This is due to strong winds and storms over the Atlantic. We anticipate this turbulence about three and a half hours into the flight. Oh, right. The main cabin service should be over by then. Good. We'll try to give you as much warning as possible, and it may be necessary for the crew to be seated and strapped in during the worst of it. Thanks, Rick. We'll try to get the drinks and meals service finished early, then. Excuse me, can I clarify something? Sure. Can we delay the main meal service until the turbulence is over? No, sorry. We'll have to follow normal procedure. You can never schedule the weather. Ted, uh, can you confirm that your crew is familiar with the cockpit procedures? Yes, Captain. All crew members are familiar with the rules and procedures regarding the cockpit. Great. OK, then, let's go and have a good flight. 1.6 can I just check what the flight time is? Can you confirm that your crew is familiar with the cockpit procedures? Can I clarify something? Can I clarify the time of the meal service? One point seven. One. What do you remember about your first pre-flight briefing? My first flight was um, a mixture of emotions. I was partly terrified and very excited. I was terrified because the training we'd been given over the six weeks um, was quite intense and I knew that arriving at the briefing room I would be asked a series of questions and I had to get those answers right to show that my training proficiency was up to standard. So that was very nerve-wracking. But I was also really, really excited. I was, you know, part of this team that was going to be taking a flight with, you know, 100 or so passengers from one country to another, and that was just unbelievable. Two. Were these briefings always the same? The actual content of the briefing was always the same. However, depending on the human factor with different people you're working with, some people, um, those in charge, would help create a friendlier environment so you could relax a little more and others would put the fear of God into you because, you know, of their sternness, their facial expressions, etc. So it was always very tense going into those pre-briefings uh, and you never quite knew what the atmosphere would be. But on the whole, it was, it was the same in content. Three. What was the common theme? Having worked for a number of different airlines, both charter work and um, scheduled international and short haul, there was a, a common theme with the pre-briefings throughout um, the industry, and that was primarily safety. And, of course, passenger information. Those briefings were used as an opportunity to inform and advise the crew of what type of passengers they were having on board, the service that day, but predominantly it was safety related. One of the things I really enjoyed about the pre-flight briefings um, was the opportunity to meet the crew that you'd be working with that day or that week and um, getting to know about the flight and you know, the particular idiosyncrasies that would occur. For example, on some flights we may have VIPs, and that was always exciting to know that you're carrying someone, you know, of a celebrity status. Um, or it may be that you're carrying, you know, a passenger who has, you know, got to travel through uh, sad reasons. Perhaps her daughter living out in New Zealand has just had a serious accident and she's travelling um, to New Zealand to, to visit her sick daughter. And all of those um, opportunities to find out about the flight, some were more poignant than others, but it was always very interesting and exciting. Really, really nice opportunity to get to know about the day ahead.
2.1. Good morning, madam. Welcome on board. Thanks. Can I see your boarding pass, please? Yes. Here you are. 27G. Go straight across to the other side and then turn right. You'll see the seat numbers on the overhead lockers. My colleague will show you where your seat is. Thank you. Hello, madam. Welcome on board. You're together. Turn right here. Go straight down the cabin past the toilets. You'll find your seats at the front of the next cabin in the middle section. Hello. How are you today, sir? May I check your boarding pass? Two point two. Can I help you, madam? Seat number seventeen D. Yes, come this way. Yours is the aisle seat just here. An aisle seat. I specifically asked for a window seat. Did you? I am sorry. You've been given an aisle seat. Did you request a window seat at check-in? Yes, and I told her I can't fly if I can't have a seat by the window. She assured me I had a window seat. Oh dear, I'm really sorry about this. But don't worry, the flight isn't full today, and I'm sure I can sort out a window seat for you. Would you mind just taking this seat until I've checked the passenger list? It'll only take a couple of minutes. Are you sure? I don't want to stay here for the flight. Don't worry. I'll be back in a moment with a better seat for you, madam. Two point three. One. Welcome on board. Two. Good morning. Three. Good afternoon. Four. Good evening. Five. Hello. How are you? Six. Hello there. How are you today? Seven. Could I please see your boarding pass? Eight. Would you mind just taking this seat until I have checked the passenger list? Nine. Can I help you, madam? Ten. Can I help you, sir? Eleven. Would you follow me, please? Twelve. This way, please. Thirteen. Here you are. Fourteen. Straight across the cabin and turn left. Fifteen. That's right. Sixteen. Carry on down the cabin. Two point four. Everything all right, Jenny? Yes, fine. Nearly all the passengers are on board now. Hello, sir. You're in row eleven. Let me see, madam. Yes, this way, on the left, eight D. It's the aisle seat. I need a window seat for a passenger. Do you have the passenger list? Yes, I've got it. Here, have a look. Great. There's a window seat free in fifteen A, Sylvie. Would you mind if I gave fifteen A to my passenger? No problem, Jenny. You go ahead. I'll carry on greeting the remaining passengers. Hello, welcome on board. Are you together? Yes. yes. Hello, madam. I've got a window seat for you in fifteen A. It's just a couple of rows in front. Would that be okay for you? Any window seat will be fine, thanks. Do you need any help with your bags? Oh, thank you. You could take this for me. Follow me. Many thanks. I really appreciate this. No problem at all. My name's Jenny. If you need anything during the flight, I'll be happy to help you. I hope you enjoy your flight. Many thanks, Jenny. Two point five. Jenny, Mrs. Lenchik will need a bassinet for her baby after takeoff. Can I leave you to look after her? Certainly. Welcome on board, Mrs. Lenchik. My name is Jenny, and I'll be looking after you during your flight. How old is your baby? She'll be eleven months tomorrow. Ah,、oh, she's asleep. She's beautiful. Has she flown before? No, this is my first flight with her. 
Actually, I've only just managed to get her to sleep. She's been a bit difficult in the departure lounge. I'm hoping she'll stay asleep during takeoff. Okay. Your baby will need to be seated on your lap for takeoff and landing, fastened to your seatbelt with a special baby belt. It's just like an extension seatbelt. Hopefully we won't wake her up. I'll go and get one for you and show you how it works. After takeoff, I'll bring you a bassinet cot for your baby. And if you need anything during the flight, just let me know. I'll be back with a baby belt in just a minute, okay? Thanks. Two point six. Hello, sir. Welcome on board. May I see your boarding pass, please? Yes, sir. Sorry, I'm late. I was delayed getting from the city to the airport. No problem. We've been expecting you. Four F. Cross to the other side and turn left. Many thanks, sir. Jenny, that's it. Everyone is on board. Can you check the doors? Tom, doors check, please. Okay, prepare for the safety demo. Okay, zone C, cabin secure. Okay, zone D and E, cabin secure. 2.7 Ladies and gentlemen, even if you are a frequent traveller, it's important that you listen carefully to the following safety instructions. You will find a safety instruction card in the pocket in front of you. Please read this carefully before takeoff and familiarize yourself with the emergency exits and procedures on board this Boeing 777S. When the seatbelt sign is on, you must fasten your seatbelt. To do this, insert the metal fitting into the buckle, like this, and tighten by pulling the strap, like this. To undo the seatbelt, Lift the buckle like this. We suggest you keep the seatbelt fastened throughout the flight. There are several emergency exits on this aircraft. They are being pointed out to you now. Please take a few moments now to locate your nearest exit. It may be behind you. If you are sitting in an emergency exit, you must know how to open the door in an emergency and when instructed to do so by the crew. If we need to evacuate the aircraft, floor level lighting will guide you to the exits. In the event of an emergency landing, you will hear brace, brace, and you must adopt this position. Look at the card for the brace position. Your life vest is under your seat. This is how you put it on. First, take it out of the pouch and put it over your head. Then, pass the straps around your waist and tie them in front. Do not inflate the vest until you leave the aircraft. To inflate the vest, pull on this red cord. ...and light to attract attention. If the pressure drops, an oxygen mask will automatically drop from the compartment above your head. To start the flow of oxygen, Pull the mask towards you, put it firmly over your mouth and nose and secure the elastic band behind your head and breathe normally. If you are travelling with a child or a person who needs assistance, put your mask on first and then assist the other person. Finally, make sure your seat backs are upright, your tables are folded away and your hand baggage is either in the overhead locker or under the seat in front of you. All electronic devices must now be switched off for takeoff. We wish you all an enjoyable flight. Two point eight. One. Hello there. This is the exit row. Have you read the safety instructions card carefully? Good. Thanks for that. Two. Can you put your table up, please, before takeoff? Three. Sorry, you'll have to switch your computer off during takeoff. Four. Is your child's seatbelt fastened securely, madam? Five. Hello, sir. This is an emergency exit, so no bags are allowed on the floor. Would you mind putting your bag in the overhead locker for takeoff?
six. Sorry, you'll have to switch off your mobile now. Seven. Could you put your seat in the upright position, please? Eight. Sir, we're preparing for takeoff, so can you fasten your seatbelt, please? 2.9. 1. Did you enjoy welcoming passengers? One of the most exciting parts of the day for me at the beginning of a flight was the welcoming of passengers because it was the opportunity you'd have to give a really cheerful welcome to all the different types of passengers that you'd be carrying on that flight and the preparation and the teamwork between the crew uh, in preparation of greeting passengers was always very exciting and when people come on board there are all sorts of emotions coming with that you've got the business traveller who has you know, a frequency of travel and therefore tends to adopt a more serious approach. You've got the holidaymaker who's very excited or a little nervous, you know, particularly with infrequent travellers, people who've never flown before. And then you've got those people who are travelling to visit family and friends and, and they've got different emotions again. And I always saw the welcoming part as my opportunity to really welcome people on board in a positive and cheerful way, showing them that, you know, they were in my safe hands, really, or our safe hands as a team, collectively. Two. Did you ever experience any problems when welcoming passengers? There was one time, I remember, we were leaving Toronto and an elderly gentleman boarded the aircraft and as he boarded, I said, you know, welcome on board, sir, and he barely could speak, he could barely walk, um, although he had no assistance and he wasn't with anybody. I showed him to his seat, um, but it became very apparent very quickly, like within... 30 seconds to a minute that this gentleman wasn't very well and I wasn't happy to take him all the way to London to take him all the way to London he looked as though he was seriously ill I called the paramedics who boarded the aircraft and unfortunately they had to take this gentleman off which I know he didn't thank me for because he just wanted to get home but it turned out that he had a serious medical condition that um, would have been life-threatening and would have meant the flight being diverted at great cost to the airline and at great time and expense to the, to the rest of the passengers on board. As the senior crew member on board that day, uh, which I was, it was a between myself and the paramedics and I was guided really on that decision by the paramedics. I mean, I, I had merely laid out, you know, the point that I was unhappy to take the passenger if he was sick and it was when the paramedics looked at him without any investigation, they recognised that he was seriously ill. So the decision was between the two of us but ultimately the paramedics. Three. Do you have any tips for a new flight attendant? Anyone who is starting out their career as a flight attendant, I would say um, do your job with the most professional um, and high standard that you can possibly have. And a little tip, I think, for anyone flying in the air is to keep drinking plenty of water because obviously uh, the aircraft can be fairly dehydrating and always, always carry a little pot of moisturiser for your lips because your lips tend to suffer quite a lot up in the air. So uh, that would be my tip. Oh, and a, definitely um, for the ladies, uh, a new bottle of nail varnish. For the male flight attendants, again, moisturiser is, is key and drink lots of water because unless you have experience of continually working in a dehydrate to dehydrate, which you really will do, so lots of water, drink lots of that and keep um, a little pack of moisturiser with you. Three point one. One. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's great to have you on board. The seatbelt sign is off, but please don't leave your seats unless you have to. This is only a short flight, and we'd like to serve you drinks and snacks as quickly as possible. 
there will only be time for one service, and, er, uh, apologies, we don't have any hot snacks today. Sorry about that. Speak to you again soon. 2. Hello everyone, this is Stefan speaking. The seatbelt sign is off. Feel free to walk around. We want to serve you drinks shortly, so watch out for the trolley. We don't want to run you down, so don't block the aisles. We don't have a lot of time, so be ready with your order, please. And your money, of course. Thanks for your cooperation. Have a good flight. 3. Ladies and gentlemen, the seatbelt sign has been switched off and you can move around the cabin. We shall be coming through the cabin with refreshments in a few moments. Kindly look at the menu card in the pocket in front of you and have your orders ready, please. We'd really appreciate it if you had the exact change for your purchases. Thank you and enjoy the flight. 3.5 Two. One. It's great to have you on board. Two. Please don't leave your seats unless you have to. Three. We'd like to serve you drinks and snacks as quickly as possible. Four. The seatbelt sign is off. 5. Feel free to walk around. 6. Thanks for your cooperation. 7. We shall be coming through the cabin with refreshments in a few moments. 8. We'd really appreciate it if you had the exact change for your purchases. 3.3 1. Excuse me. Excuse me. Could you sit down, please? We need to get past with the trolley. We don't have a lot of time. Listen, I'm sorry, but I have to go to the toilet. OK, no problem. Sorry about that. 2. Sorry to bother you. Can I have a glass of water? I have to take my medicine. Yes, of course. We're coming through the cabin now and I'll bring it to you. What seat are you in? 11D, thanks. 3. Hello, can I help you? Yes, could you heat my baby's bottle, please? I'm afraid we're busy just now. Can you wait a moment? Not really. I have to feed her now. She's been crying for a long time. Leave it with me and I'll do it as soon as possible. Many thanks. 4. Excuse me. What can I do for you? Um, on arrival, I have to get from Terminal 2 to Terminal 3. Uh, how long will it take? I've got a pretty tight connection. Ah, oh, yes. Look, we have to start the refreshment service now. Can you wait until we finish the service and then I'll explain everything for you? OK, but can I remind you in about 30 minutes? I'm really nervous about missing the next flight. Listen, don't worry. I'll get back to you, I promise. Thanks. 3.4 Can I help you? What can I do for you? Yes, of course. OK, no problem. I'm afraid we're busy just now. Can you wait a moment? Can you wait until we've finished the service? Leave it with me and I'll do it as soon as possible. I'll get back to you, I promise. 
3.5. Passenger 1. Hello, madam. Are you feeling better now? Yes, thank you. But I can't get my bag down from the overhead locker. Let me help. Oh, thank you so much. No problem, madam. My pleasure. Passenger 2. Can I help you, sir? Yes, you can. I asked for a blanket ten minutes ago. Ah, yes. I do apologise. I'll get it immediately. Passenger 3. Did you call, sir? Yes, several times. In fact, I don't understand. You announced the meal service a long time ago. When are you going to serve us? It's really poor. You're quite right, sir, but good news. We're just about to start the meal service. Passenger 4 Hello there. Is everything all right? Can I change my seat, please? There's an empty seat over there. You're right. Let me just quickly check the passenger list to make sure it's empty. Yes, that's fine. Go ahead. Thanks very much. Three point six. Hello, madam. Are you feeling better now? Can I help you, sir? Did you call, sir? Hello there. Is everything all right? No problem, madam. I do apologise. I'll get it immediately. You're quite right, sir. Yes, that's fine. Go ahead. Three point seven. Conversation one. Here's the menu, sir. Oh, thank you. By the way, how long is the flight? Eleven hours. But the captain said we arrive at fourteen forty-five. Oh, that's local time. Oh, of course. Anything else I can do for you? No, thanks. I'm fine. Conversation two. Menu. Menu. Here you are, madam. Ah, oh, good. Will you be serving the meals soon? Well, there'll be drinks first, and then the meal will follow. So, in about one hour. A little earlier, I think. It's ten o'clock now, so let's say about ten forty-five. Oh, that's good. My two boys are starving. Really? Let me try to find something when I come back with the drink shortly. That would be very kind. Thanks. Conversation three. Headphones, madam. Oh, thanks. Can the girls have them as well? Of course. Have they used them before? Yes, they showed me how to use them. And the handsets. Ah, good. Films are on Channel 2, girls, OK? Conversation 4. Headphones, sir? Thanks. Um, oh, uh, can I have a blanket, please? Sure. Are you cold? Just a little. But I, I'm not complaining. I'll bring it to you in a moment. Let me put the call light on to remind me. Can I get you anything else, sir? No, that's fine. Thank you very much. 3.8 Here you are. Can I get you anything else? Anything else I can do for you? Let me put the call light on for you. Don't worry, you'll be fine. Of course, no problem at all. I'll be back in five minutes. 3.9 1. After takeoff, what were your main duties? Once the aircraft is in the air and the seatbelt signs go off, Flight attendants are usually very, very busy. We are 
jumping out of our seats and getting the drinks trolleys ready for that first service. And there's quite a flurry of activity there because obviously the galleys are quite small and trolleys are coming out and the preparation will take about 10 to 15 minutes. In between all of that, you're dealing with passenger queries. You know, somebody will be ringing the bell because as soon as they're airborne and the seatbelt signs go off, they want their questions answered or they... They might feel cold or they might have a connection problem that they want to know about. So just after that takeoff, it can be quite intense for the cabin crew setting the trolleys up and dealing with general passenger queries. Two. Is there a big difference after takeoff on short haul and long haul flights? The only difference between short haul and long haul flights um, in terms of the duties that flight attendants have is the speed, I think, because on a short haul flight, speed is of the essence. So flight attendants have to work very, very fast to get those drinks trolleys or whichever service they're, they're starting with out. Whereas on a long haul flight, there is not that time that you're racing against. So it's... I think speed is probably the only thing that I can think of that's a real difference between short haul and long haul. I preferred the long haul flights. It was always exciting anyway to know that you were going to Kuala Lumpur or Tokyo. But on top of that, the long haul flights for me were great because you had a chance to really interact with the passengers on board. You weren't just having them for 30 minutes, which was the short which was the short haul option. And throughout a 12 or 14 hour flight, you could really get to know some people well and do a really great job looking after them. So I, I particularly like the long haul. Three. Did you have any strange experiences after takeoff? I remember once when I first started flying, I was only about 20 and I was on a charter flight out of Birmingham. And as we rumbled down the runway, uh, a lovely old couple sat in front of me at the door exit. And as we took off, this man sitting opposite me, suddenly grabbed my foot and he held on to it for at least five minutes and I couldn't move and I was nudging and poking my colleague and we were giggling quietly and only when the aircraft levelled out I was able to shake my foot uh, at the passenger who was still holding it and he looked, he was so embarrassed and he hadn't realised how frightened he was and had grabbed my foot. And I couldn't move. I couldn't get up to help set up the drinks trolleys or do anything because he was holding on to my foot. So that was quite funny and I've never forgotten it. 4.1 Would you like beef or chicken, sir? Or the vegetarian option, the lasagna? Beef, please. Here we are. What would you like to drink? A glass of red wine, please. Okay. Uh, Is it French? No, it's a South African wine. It's very nice. Would you like to try it? Yes, thanks. And you, madam, would you like beef or chicken or the lasagna? Oh, have you got any fish? No, I'm sorry. Our choices are beef, chicken or vegetable lasagna today. Is the chicken very spicy? No, it's just mildly spiced. It's not like a curry. Would you like to try it? Good. I'll take the chicken. Could I have a glass of water too, please? Certainly, madam. Would you like still or sparkling? Still, please. There you are. Enjoy your meal. And what about your children? Do you have children's meals on board? We do carry pre-ordered special children's meals for passengers who have booked prior to their flight. Did you book them? Nah, I'm afraid I didn't. Well, I could check to see if we have any spare meals for you. Would you like me to do that? Ah, yes please. That would be great. I'll be back in a moment. I've got two children's meals here that have been ordered but not needed. It's burger and chips and fun food they'll really enjoy. Would they like these? Ah, it's their favourite food. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. There you are. Would you like a drink with your meal, boys? They'd like a 7-Up with no ice, please. If you're returning with us, it might be possible to order your children a special child's meal for their flight home. I can come back to you after the meal's service and discuss if you'd like. 
Oh, that'd be great. Thanks. No problem. I'll be back after the meal service then. Enjoy your meal. Would you like chicken or beef, sir? 4.2 Coffee or tea? Red or white wine? Still or sparkling? Beef or chicken? Brown or white? Vegetarian or non-vegetarian? 4.3 Soda Perrier Apple juice Sauvignon Blanc Earl Grey tea. Ginger ale. Bourbon. English breakfast tea. Espresso. Four point four. Passenger one. What would you like to drink? A large glass of water, first of all, and a gin and tonic, please. No problem. Ice with your water? No, thanks. Passenger 2. What can I get you, sir? What kind of fruit juice have you got? Apple, orange, pineapple or tomato. Pineapple, please. Passenger Three. What would you like, sir? Could I have a cup of tea, please? Yes, of course. Do you mind waiting a moment? We're serving cold drinks just now. Oh, sorry. I'll have an apple juice then, and the tea later. Are you sure? Yes, that'll be fine. Passenger four. Would you like a drink from the bar, sir? Do you have a cold beer? Sure. Heineken or a local beer? I'll try a local one, please. Here you are. Passenger 5 Can we have two large glasses of Coke, please? With ice, I guess. Yes, please. Here we are. Enjoy. Passenger 6 Excuse me, could I have another glass of white wine? By all means. Pass your glass, please. There you are. Many thanks. The meal is great, by the way. Glad you're enjoying it.
Passenger 7. Excuse me, I'd like another vodka. Sorry, sir, we'll be landing in 30 minutes and the drinks bar has been closed. Can I get you a soft drink, perhaps? No, thanks. Four point five. Apple, orange, pineapple, or tomato. Coke, Fanta, Sprite, Seven Up, or Lilt. Red wine, white wine, sherry, or champagne. Earl Grey, English breakfast, peppermint, or green. Still water, sparkling water, soda water, or tonic water. Espresso, cappuccino, decaffeinated or regular. Four point six. Ladies and gentlemen, the duty-free sales will begin shortly. Please prepare your list of purchases. Check the shopping on board magazine in your seat pocket. All prices are in local currency and in U.S. dollars, and you can pay by cash or by using a credit card. We accept most major credit cards. Frequent flyers win points on all sales on board. There are some excellent bargains, and there are several items specially designed for our airline. Four point seven. Perfumes, gifts, chocolates, alcohol, toys. Yes, please. What can I get for you, sir? I'm looking for a light perfume for my daughter's birthday. I have the perfect one. No, two. Both are a hundred mils. This one is delightful, and it's a bargain at only forty-one dollars. The other one is a classic, the very best, but more expensive at sixty-five dollars. Which one do you recommend? I really like this one. And it costs forty-one dollars. Yes, that's right. Okay, I'll take it. How would you like to pay? By credit card. But just a minute. Can I also see the airline's specially designed scarves? Of course. They're pure silk, and they're let me see, seventy-two dollars each. I'll take one. So that comes to let me add it up, forty-one plus seventy-two, a hundred and thirteen dollars. Okay. Here's my credit card and my frequent flyers card too for the points. Thank you. Would you like a receipt or just the credit card printout? I need the receipt too, please. No problem. Here's your receipt. Here are your cards, and these are your gifts. Many thanks. It's a pleasure. Duty-free sales? Yes? No? Four point eight. The perfume costs forty-one dollars. The scarves are seventy-two dollars each. Forty-one plus seventy-two makes a hundred and thirteen dollars. Four times eight equals thirty-two dollars. A hundred dollars minus eighty-five. That's fifteen dollars change. That comes to a hundred and twenty euros. How will you be paying? By card or with cash? How would you like to pay? Here's your receipt, your card, and your gifts. Four point nine. One. Did you enjoy this part of the flight? I enjoyed all parts of the in-flight service, but the nicest part was probably doing the meals and the drinks because that was the chance you had to engage with the passengers for the first time after takeoff. And you'd come through the cabin, and you could really hold some good conversations with passengers and and find out, you know, how they were feeling and, you know, how excited or, or 
if they wanted to be left alone and you could really uh, gauge that quite well during that first part of the meals or drink service. And you could get to know people a little as well. You know, you'd get to know that little old lady who was very nervous about flying to Australia for the first time. And uh, you'd also get to, you know, speak to a wide range of people for, you know, a duration, which was which was good. During the food and um, drinks service, quite often, particularly on international flights, you'd have a lot of people on board who wouldn't be able to speak the language. But there was never any problem with the food and drink. People all over the world seem to know what a Coke is or uh, whether they're having beef or chicken. So food and drink was never an issue with foreign language, which was always useful. Two. How much do cabin crew know about the meals in advance? During the pre-flight briefing that um, all airlines carry out, the crew get to know about the meals in advance. We will know how many passengers we have on board. We will know any special meal requirements that are needed and any dietary uh, problems. And we will know of any any special requests that a a passenger may have um, given prior to their flight. So we have all that information and by the time we get on board, we check the catering to make sure those passenger requirements are actually on board. Three. Do you remember one special incident during the meals service? During the meals service, it can be horrific because... Although I've said that it's a really great time to engage with customers, it's also quite um, a frenetic time because passengers are also worried to know whether their meal that they've requested is on board. One particular occasion I remember was a lady travelling from London to Hong Kong and she had three children and had requested three special children's meals. Unfortunately, my stewardess had actually given the three children meals to the row in front of her who just happened to have three children in the row in front. So, of course, the first I heard of it was when the call bell rang and this very irate lady was so cross. I mean, she was shouting and screaming at the stewardess at how stupid the stewardess had been and why should these other people get her children's meal that she'd requested. It was a difficult situation, but I managed to calm her down by listening to her and sorting out the children um, with food from business class and first class, which was which was very fortunate because this particular flight, we had a lot of children and a lot of children's meals and there weren't any spare. So the only way I was able to appease this lady was to go and make up a dinner from the first class menu and fortunately managed to do that. But uh, yes, it was a, 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 an occasion I remember well. Five point one. Did you call, sir? Ah, yes. I don't understand this thing. Your handset? Yes. What's the problem? I don't have any sound, I'm afraid. I'm sorry about that. Have you checked your headphones are plugged in properly? Yes. It's just that they're not working. Let's see. Press the volume button here. That's right. And then the up and down button. Ah, that's it. Got it. Many thanks. You're welcome. Excuse me, I need your help too. Of course, how can I help? What's the matter? I can't get the film I want. I'll show you. Press menu first, then movies. Okay. Which film do you want to see? This one, The English Patient. Okay, so press select and then play. And off you go. Enjoy the film. Thanks very much. My pleasure. Five point two. One. Did you call, sir? Two. Your handset? Three. Okay. Four. What's the problem? Five. What's the matter? Six. How can I help? Five 
5.3. 1. Sorry to bother you. I have a short transit time on arrival and this flight was delayed. I'm worried that... You'll miss your connection. Exactly. 2. Excuse me, is it possible to get a snack during the night? I'm already hungry. Of course. We have a self-service in the galley, or you can call. 3. You called, madam? Yes, I certainly did. I told your colleague it was too cold at least 15 minutes ago, and it's still like an icebox. 4. Hello. What can I do for you? My daughter isn't well. I think she's got a high temperature. Do you have any paracetamol? 5.3 1 Sorry to bother you. I have a short transit time on arrival and this flight was delayed. I'm worried that... You'll miss your connection. Exactly. Did you check your baggage right through? Yes. Then you should be okay, so don't worry. I'll check on our arrival time and get back to you. Thanks for your help. 2. Excuse me, is it possible to get a snack during the night? I'm already hungry. Of course. We have a self-service in the galley, or you can call. Fantastic. Maybe I'll have one now before I go to sleep. I'll get it for you. A sandwich or pot noodles? Oh, definitely not pot noodles. A sandwich, then. Thanks very much. Don't mention it. I'll get it now. 3. You called, madam? Yes, I certainly did. I told your colleague it was too cold at least 15 minutes ago and it's still like an icebox. You're right, it is cold. I'm afraid it often takes about 20 minutes for the cabin to acclimatise after takeoff. I'll get you a blanket in the meantime if you'd like. Oh, yes, please. What a good idea. I'll be back in a moment. Four. Hello. What can I do for you? My daughter isn't well. I think she's got a high temperature. Do you have any paracetamol? Yes, but I'm afraid we can't give it. We need a doctor or a nurse. Was she like this before boarding? No, not at all. She was fine, but she's very hot now and complaining of a bad headache. I'll see what I can do. Oh, how old is she? Seven. I'll ask if there is a doctor or nurse on board. Five point five. I'll check on our arrival time and get back to you. I'll ask if there is a doctor or nurse on board. I'll get you a blanket. I'll get it for you. I'll get it now. I'll show you how it works. I'll get you another one. 5.6 What would you like, madam? Just a cup of tea, please. No problem. What kind of tea have you got? Uh, let me see. Earl Grey and herbal. English breakfast. Peppermint. Peppermint, yes. So, two peppermint teas, please. Oops, sorry. We don't have any peppermint. My mistake. Oh, then two Earl Grey. And you, sir, what would you like? A tomato juice, please. I'm afraid we've only got apple juice and orange juice today. Oh, OK, but what a pity. Orange, please. Here you are. I do apologise. Thanks. What can I get you, sir? Two cheese sandwiches and two Diet Cokes, please. Oh, dear. I am sorry, but we've run out of cheese. They've been very popular today, but I can offer you chicken sandwiches. I don't believe it. It's the same old story. You always seem to run out. Once again, I can only apologize, sir. Would you like the chicken? No way. No, thank you. Sorry about that. 
Madam? A peppermint tea, please. I'm really sorry. We haven't got any left. We've got Earl Grey. 5.7 What can I get you, sir? Two cheese sandwiches and two Diet Cokes, please. Oh dear, I am sorry, but we've run out of cheese. They've been very popular today. But I can offer you chicken sandwiches. I don't believe it. It's the same old story. You always seem to run out. Once again, I can only apologize, sir. Would you like the chicken? No way. No thank you. Sorry about that. Five point eight. Sorry, we don't have any peppermint. My mistake. I'm afraid we've only got apple juice and orange juice today. I do apologize. I am sorry, but we've run out of cheese. I can only apologize, sir. Sorry about that. I'm really sorry. We haven't got any left. Five point nine. One. In general, are passengers difficult to please? You know, flying is always very tense and nerve-wracking for passengers and crew alike. And on the whole, most passengers are easy to please, providing you give them what they want, when they want it, in a polite and courteous way. Most passengers are happy. So I would say in general, they're not difficult to please. There's just a minority that um, may have problems and they can be the, the difficult part of a flight attendant's job. Goodness, if flight attendants didn't have the appropriate training to handle in-flight situations, particularly with customer complaints and customer problems, I think there'd be a lot more unhappy customers. So the training is quite intense. There's usually, most airlines will usually provide at least a week or possibly two weeks of customer service training, whereby one week of that or half of that training is centred on handling passenger complaints so they have good training to deal with um, common situations. Two. What's the most common minor complaint? You know the most common complaint we have on board as flight attendants is the seating. A lot of people can't pre-book their seat and they either want a window seat or they want an aisle seat or they want to be near the front or they want to be near their friends who they've been separated from because their friend was able to book their seat, etc. So the commonest problem is seating. And I think the second most common problem you'll experience as a flight attendant is the meals because when there are meals on board, um, we can only carry, you know, a choice of two, maximum three. And we always seem to run out of the choice that passengers want the most of that day. So those are, those are the two most common complaints. Three. Is the passenger always right? I think the passenger is always right um, if they have a problem or if they think they have a problem or they think something's wrong. I think it's important that the flight crew acknowledge that and show the customer or the passenger that they understand the problem and that they're going to deal with it. So in many ways, I do believe that the passenger is always right. In, in technical terms, they are always right. But of course, we know in reality that you know they may not be right. But I, I do feel that it's important that flight crew can see that if the passenger thinks there's a problem, then we must accept that and deal with the problem so that the passenger feels comfortable and happy that their problem has been acknowledged and is being dealt with. 6.1 Ladies and gentlemen, the captain has switched on the seatbelt sign. Please return immediately to your seats and fasten your seatbelts. Due to air turbulence, all in-flight service is suspended and will be resumed as soon as possible. Hemel, can you bring your trolley back to the galley as quickly as possible and get it stored away securely? 
Yes, but those people in row 20 haven't sat down yet. What are they doing still standing around? Okay, I'll deal with that. <clears throat> Excuse me, can you sit down and fasten your seat belts, please? This lady's been hurt. She's bleeding. What's happened? Hello? Are you all right? Can you hear me? The overhead locker flew open with the turbulence and a laptop fell onto her head. I think she's unconscious. Okay, thank you for letting me know. I'll deal with the lady now, sir. Please take your seat and strap in securely. Hemel, I need some help. Get the first aid kit immediately. Okay. Yutta, can you secure my trolley for me, please, and call Ted to inform him we have a passenger with a head injury in Zone D and that Layla is dealing with it? Six point two. Is she travelling with you, sir? No, I think she's alone. I haven't spoken to her, but I don't think she's travelling with anyone. Hello? Hello? How are you feeling? Oh, everything just went black. Do you have any pain? I I'm a bit dizzy, that's all. You've had a nasty bang on your head. How are you feeling? Not too bad. Would you like a glass of water? Yes, that would be good. You've got a small cut on your forehead. It doesn't look too serious, though. I'm going to clean up the wound and put a dressing over it. Do you feel well enough to sit up? I'm fine. Here is the first aid kit. How is she? She's feeling all right. Thanks, Hemel. Can you get her a glass of water, please? Yes, I'll get one. I'm all right. I was a bit dizzy, but I'm fine now. I'm glad you're feeling all right. Can you hold this compress against your forehead? The captain has switched on the seatbelt sign, so if you feel able to sit up, I could help you into your seat. I'll fasten your seatbelt for you and come back and check how you are in a few moments. 6.3 What's happened? Are you alright? Can you hear me? How are you feeling? Do you have any pain? Do you feel well enough to sit up? How is she? Can you hold this compress against your forehead? Can you get her a glass of water, please? Six point four. Hey, come quickly. There's a man back here. He's unconscious. Okay. Where is he? Bilal, grab the oxygen and a defibrillator from the medical kit and get Sophia to call Anton to advise him of a medical emergency. Okay. Hello, Anton. This is Sophia here from Economy Cabin. We have a medical emergency on board. Hello? Can you hear me? Are you travelling with this passenger? I'm his wife. Oh my goodness. I think he's had a heart attack. He said he had a bit of indigestion. That was all. He stood up to go to the toilet and then he collapsed. He's very grey. He's not breathing. Let's get him on the floor now. Oh, he's breathing again. Has this ever happened before? No. Bilal, help me get the mask over his head. Can you hear me? Please move away and return to your seats. He needs as much air as possible. Sit down, please. Thank you. Bilal, I think we're going to need a doctor. Can you make an announcement immediately? Is he on any medication? Yes, he's a diabetic, so he has injections for that. Is he going to be all right? Don't worry. We're taking care of him. How old is he? 63. And in good health, usually? Yes, but he's been very tired recently. Ladies and gentlemen, if there is a doctor on board, please make yourself known to a member of the crew immediately by pressing your call bell. Thank you. I'm a doctor. What's the problem? Oh, thank goodness. Hello, Doctor. Thank you for coming forward. 
This passenger is unconscious and he stopped breathing for a few seconds. We administered CPR for two minutes and he's breathing again, although his pulse is very weak and his breathing is shallow. We're just administering oxygen. 6.5 Bilal, grab the oxygen. Get Sophia to call Anton. Help me get the mask over his head. Tell the captain. Make an announcement immediately. Six point six. So what is the situation with the passenger? We have a doctor on board who is with the passenger at the moment. However, it's a very serious situation. The doctor has said the passenger is going into cardiac arrest and has requested the aircraft should divert to the nearest hospital urgently. Right. You're absolutely certain? Yes, Captain. Is the passenger travelling with anybody else? His wife is with him. She's naturally highly stressed and anxious. Right. I need the passenger's details immediately. I'll contact ATC and make the necessary arrangements. And I'll be back in touch with you in a minute. Okay. 6.7 Ladies and gentlemen, this is an important announcement. We have a serious medical situation on board and we need to divert to Mumbai, the nearest airport, as soon as possible. The flight attendants will now prepare the cabin for landing. I anticipate being on the ground within the next 15 minutes. After landing at Mumbai, you must remain on board the aircraft. I do apologize for any inconvenience this diversion may cause. However, I'd like to thank you for your cooperation and understanding. After landing at Mumbai, we will keep you regularly updated with our plans for your continued flight today. 6.8 Ladies and gentlemen, if there is a doctor on board, please make yourself known to a member of the crew immediately by pressing your call bell. Thank you. 6.9 Collapsed Checked Stopped Asked Switched. D. Loosened. Happened. Resumed. Informed. Arrived. Closed. Remained. Administered. Suffered. Id. Wanted. Reported. Fainted. Needed. Decided. Assisted. Recommended. Six point ten. One. Were you trained to be a good nurse? One of the good things about the um, flight attendant training is the first aid training that people receive it's absolutely second to none and it's so specific and intensive training so you're looking at at least five days of first aid training um, and we cover all sorts of things from fractures to uh, hyperventilation to heart attacks and strokes and we are taught how to deal with such a wide range of situations that can occur on board, you know, from um, giving birth on board to, you know, a nosebleed. 
So there are many different aspects of um, nursing training that flight attendants receive. And again, at the pre-flight briefing, that, sh- that skills and knowledge that people have prior to their flight attendant role, if they've been a nurse um, in a previous job, then that all comes together at the pre-briefing. So as well as having you know excellent first aid training, should a situation arise on board, you've usually got one or two people who can actually use previous experience in addition to that. Two. Do you have a special medical crisis that you remember in particular? Once I was working down in the back galley on a jumbo jet and this gentleman came and sat on one of the crew seats and at first I looked at him and he looked a little bit grey and uh, I was a little bit worried because he... He asked for a glass of water and he, I noticed he was sweating profusely on, on his head. And I gave him the glass of water and carried on getting the food trolleys, food trolleys ready for the cabin crew. And as I manoeuvred a trolley around him, he just fell on the floor in front of me. And I recognised immediately that he was going into heart attack, partly because of his grey colour. I mean, he was so grey. And the sweating, you know, it should have really alerted me to this uh, a minute or two earlier. But I, I was busy just getting the food trolleys and I just thought he needed a glass of water. However, um, when he collapsed, I managed to get him into the recovery position and immediately went onto the interphone to call one of the stewardesses who had been a nurse in her previous job. She came down within seconds and we managed to get the passenger onto the floor with an oxygen bottle and um, she revived him. She was incredible. She was very calm and, you know, with the oxygen and just monitoring him, he the colour returning to his face was quite spectacular. He went from grey to rosy red within five minutes and we moved him into business class after that so that we could monitor him more carefully and uh, just check that he wasn't getting, you know, sort of claustrophobic. Uh, We don't know what brought his heart attack on, but we were pleased that it was only a minor heart attack and he did make a full recovery. Three. What's your advice about medical incidents on board to flight attendants in their final phase of training? I would say to flight attendants in training not to worry too much about in-flight incidents that may occur because the training that they receive as flight attendants is, is very, very good. And on top of that, the ability and the skill within the flight attendant team is usually pretty high so with you who has been in a nursing profession prior to the role so advice to you as a flight attendant just starting out your career is to be calm um, remember your training and always remember to utilize um, the skills and ability of your fellow crew around you Ladies and gentlemen, this is an emergency. This is an emergency. Stay in your seats with your seat belts fastened. Remain calm and follow these instructions. Pull down the oxygen mask. Pull down the oxygen mask. Put it over your nose and mouth immediately and breathe normally. Grab your mask, pull it down and place it over your nose and mouth. Remain calm. Stay in your seats and pull a mask towards you. Place the mask over your mouth and nose like this and breathe normally, adjusting the band to secure it. Do make sure your own mask is fitted properly before helping anyone else. 7.2 Stay in your seats. Remain calm. Pull down the oxygen mask. Pull it down over your nose and mouth. Breathe normally. 7.3 
Ladies and gentlemen, your captain speaking. We have a technical problem, and for everyone's safety, we've decided to land in the next 20 minutes at the nearest airport. The landing should be perfectly normal, but for safety reasons, we will evacuate the aircraft using the slides. The cabin crew will now give you full instructions and prepare you for the landing. Please listen carefully to their instructions. Thank you. 7.4 Ladies and gentlemen, as the captain has just told you, we shall be landing in 20 minutes. For safety reasons, after landing, we shall be leaving the aircraft using the evacuation slides. So please listen very carefully and do exactly as instructed. Please return to your seats immediately and keep your seatbelt fastened securely. We are now going to take you through our safety procedures. Please watch and listen carefully. The safety card in your seat pocket shows details of your escape routes, oxygen masks, and life jackets. It also shows the bracing position, which you must adopt in an emergency landing. Again, please listen carefully. Emergency exits are on both sides of the aircraft. They are clearly marked and are being pointed out to you now. On the main deck, there are two exits at the rear of the first class cabin and two at the front and rear of each other cabin section. On the upper deck, there is an emergency exit on each side in the middle of the cabin. Please take a moment now to locate the exit nearest to you, bearing in mind that the nearest usable exit may be behind you. To help you find your way to the exits, additional lighting is provided in the aisles at floor level. Please remain seated and follow instructions given to you by your crew. Do not leave your seats until instructed to do so by your crew. When the seatbelt signs are switched off, make your way to your nearest exit. Leave all personal belongings behind. I repeat, leave all personal hand baggage behind. Ladies, remove high heel shoes as they may tear the slide. 7.5 the captain told the crew to prepare the cabin for an emergency landing. The flight attendant told the passengers to take off their shoes. The flight attendant told the passengers not to get anything from the overhead lockers. The purser told the passengers not to worry. Seven point six. One. What was the most serious emergency you experienced? One of the the most horrible situations I experienced was a flight um, leaving Lusaka, Africa, and we'd as a crew, had a wonderful 10 days in Africa doing safari and all excited about going home, you know, to show our friends all the wonderful photos. And on takeoff at V1, just before V1, which is um, the point the aircraft must leave the ground, there was an instrument failure and the pilot was flying the aircraft and needed to have a speed of 140 knots but at v1 at this point where the aircraft must take off the captain's um speed went down to 80 knots so they took an unprecedented decision in aborting the takeoff at v1 and this was unplanned no crew knew about what was happening all we knew that um the aircraft suddenly came into break form and the aircraft started swerving violently from left to right. And I can remember as a junior stewardess at the time, looking at my senior crew member, and he had veins popping out of his neck. He was obviously, you know, really, really um, scared. My crew were looking quite terrified. As I looked down the cabin, I could see into the business class section and I saw fear on people's faces and their knuckles were white and stretched as they were grabbing their armrests. 
And all this time, the aircraft was shaking violently from left to right, had completely lost. All this time, the aircraft was shaking violently from left to right, had completely lost control of, you know, going straight. At the time, I felt the nose had lifted up because I was sitting at the um, doors one left, which is at the front of the aircraft. And I remember feeling the sensation of going up and then feeling the bang as the nose wheels came back down. But I've since been told that that couldn't possibly happen. So I would imagine that it was just breaking at that crucial point, uh, which was quite severe breaking, and uh, that in itself created lots of secondary problems for us as flight crew. We had no communication from the flight deck during that initial sort of 20, 30 seconds. It was a very frightening experience, um, particularly because as an experienced flight crew, um, you gauge when you're going to be taking off. And I knew we'd been going along that runway for at least 25, 30 seconds and gaining speed all the time. So I knew takeoff was imminent. And the fact that we were suddenly swerving and and literally going violently from left to right with the wingtips, you know, virtually touching the ground was very, very scary. And no communication from the flight crew. So that... Lusaka experience was one of the most serious emergency situations I've encountered through my flying career. Two. Did you ever have to evacuate passengers? That emergency uh, called for uh, an immediate evacuation. The captain did come on to the announcement at that point and apologised to the passengers that we had had such a, an aborted takeoff and he quickly explained that his instrument and he had decided to abort the takeoff but and there was no worries no problems we would sit and we were going to taxi back to the airport but in fact what had happened through that violent braking all the tires on the aircraft had burst bar three so this meant that the captain had no steering facility which was why the aircraft was jerking so severely from left to right so he brought the aircraft to a stop and made another another announcement he was excellent in communicating with the passengers and the crew immediately I mean you know I commend his um, communication skills on that occasion but the evacuation had to take place because we couldn't move the aircraft and basically the heat from that braking was getting to a danger point um, near the fuel tanks. So evacuation via the slides had to take place. Evacuating the passengers, it was the first time I'd ever had to do this in my um, flying career. And um, your brain goes into automatic. All the training that you've taken in and absorbed through every year you're, you're flying suddenly comes into play. And once the aircraft had stopped and the captain had told us we were to evacuate, as I said, your training comes into, f into the front and you just go into automatic. So the doors were opened and the slides inflated. But funny things happen when people are scared and panicky. And the passengers, I'd been watching them as we were trying to open the doors and, um, you know, make a, an exit for them. Just seeing those knuckles, I'll never forget those people sitting poised, waiting to dart out of their seat. And one man, as we began shouting instructions, unfasten your seatbelt, leave your seat, come this way. This man, he ran to the door and the seat, the, the slide hadn't fully inflated. It was just unfolding. And he jumped out before anyone could stop him. <laughs> Fortunately, he didn't hurt himself because by the time he was going down the slide, the bottom of the slide had actually inflated and he was able to evacuate. I think he just had a few damaged, scratched knees. Also, some people become really, really selfish. There was a lady, she had two children and she actually went down the slide leaving her children at the top. And I was stunned at that. 
you know, to think that she would go down before her children. So people behave very, very strangely in in a scary situation like that. They they just see an opening, they see the smoke coming around the fuselage of the aircraft, and they just want to get out. And yeah, it surprised all of us. When we evacuated the aircraft, people again don't some people don't realize the enormity or the 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 emergency of the situation and as people were leaving the cabin f- particularly from economy one gentleman i hear was trying to take his briefcase from the overhead lockers and this was impeding other people's access or stopping other people from getting forward to the doors that were open for them to evacuate. So that caused a big problem and the crew were trying to shout instructions to the uh, passenger who took absolutely no notice. He was determined he was having his briefcase and that was it. Also, the, f- the captain had instructed that the overwing doors must not be opened because the fuel tanks were there. Authority to push past the stewardesses and actually physically open those doors. Um, obviously, after during the debrief um, with the report, this was a serious situation. Fortunately, the fuel tanks didn't explode, but those few passengers that evacuated over the wing were very, very, um, you know, in danger of you know, losing their life, I think, and they had totally ignored the stewardesses. And again, unfortunately, the stewardesses at the overwing were very inexperienced and didn't have the authority to um, stop those passengers. And I think possibly a bit of that plus their inexperience um, and, and their own personal need to get out maybe have forced them to allow the passengers to open the door. So fortunately, the story um, was a happy ending because the evacuation went well. We evacuated all the passengers within 18 seconds and we had 190 passengers on board, so that was pretty good. And there was no danger to anyone and the aircraft, uh, although very sick, uh, didn't cause any problems to any of us. And there were no injuries from passengers either. Three. What special qualities as a flight attendant do you need in emergencies? I think all flight attendants have to be able to cope with pressure and stress. They have to be able to demonstrate a calmness and they have to also be um, competent and feel confident about what they're doing and, and, what, and what their role is and what their responsibility as a safety officer on board is. And if you can be calm, if you can absorb your training and know your drills as to what to do in any given situation, particularly emergency, then the training will automatically take over and your calm your calm approach plus your training will help you deal with the situation in the best way possible. 8.1 1 Excuse me, we've been waiting for drinks for a long time. We finished eating 20 minutes ago. Oh, I do understand. I apologise. It's been so busy. What can I get you? I'm sorry, I can't eat this meal. It's cold. Oh dear, that's not good. I am really sorry. Let me take it away for you and see if I can get you a hot cooked meal immediately. Three. This is not what I asked for. I ordered a vegetarian meal. Oh dear, I'm sorry about this. Please be patient. Let me just check the special meals list. 8.2 Let me just check the special meals list. Let me get an official form for you. Let me see if I can get you another one. Let me get you a blanket. 8.3 1 The toilets are dirty and the smell is disgusting. 
two. We've asked for the cabin to be made a little warmer, and it's getting even colder. Three. Excuse me, why doesn't someone tell us why there's such a long delay? Four. Listen, it's not good enough. First we were given the wrong seats, and now we are surrounded by crying babies. Five. I want to make an official complaint. There were no snacks, the plane hadn't been cleaned, and the service was awful. 8.4 1. The toilets are dirty and the smell is disgusting. Thank you for letting me know, and I do apologise. I'll make sure they're dealt with immediately. As soon as they've been cleaned, I'll come back to let you know. 2. We've asked for the cabin to be made a little warmer, and it's getting even colder. Yes, I'm sorry about this. We seem to have a slight technical problem with the cabin temperature at the moment, but we are sorting it out. It should warm up in about five minutes. Let me get you a blanket in the meantime. 3. Excuse me? Why doesn't someone tell us why there's such a long delay? I do apologise, sir. I know how frustrating it is sitting here and not knowing what's going on. Unfortunately, the jetty got stuck and so we couldn't close the door. However, we expect to be pushing back in five minutes. Four. Listen, it's not good enough. First we were given the wrong seats and now we are surrounded by crying babies. I'm sorry about that. You're right. I have a couple of empty seats in the quieter part of the cabin a little further down. You'd be welcome to move to those. 5. I want to make an official complaint. There were no snacks, the plane hadn't been cleaned and the service was awful. I'm sorry that you haven't enjoyed your flight. We've had so many problems today and I can only apologise. I'll get an official complaint form for you this very minute. 8.5 Excuse me, listen, I can't sit here any longer. That group of people is making too much noise. They're disturbing me and everyone around. If you can't do anything about it, you'll have to find me another seat. I refuse to sit here any longer. Hmm. Yes, I understand. I can hear how noisy they are, and I'm sorry they are disturbing you. Have you spoken to them yourself? Of course not. I don't think they care about me or anyone else. Let me have a word with them. If it doesn't get better, then I'll try to find you another seat, although the plane is pretty full. How about that? Well, uh, yes, okay. Thank you. That would be fine. 8.6 Hans, I need your help. What's the problem, Josef? Can you see that guy standing in the middle with his arms folded? Yes, he looks upset and angry. He is. He wants me to tell the group behind him to keep quiet or else he is demanding a seat change. I wondered if there were any seats vacant in the next cabin in case I have to reseat him. Out of the question. The plane's full. There aren't any spare seats anywhere. Okay, I'll go over and tell the group to quieten down. I think that's the best thing. I just hope they'll be reasonable. You'll be fine. Just use your usual charm and ask them to be a little quieter. Hans, if you see me struggling, please could you come over to help me? You'll be fine. Don't worry. I'll keep an eye on you. If there is still a problem, then I'll come over. 8.7 Excuse me. Excuse me? Uh, Listen, guys, are you enjoying the flight? Yes, yeah, sure. You bet, it's great. Great. Could I ask you a special favour? Would you mind just keeping your voices down a little? 
you're getting a little loud and some people are trying to sleep or watch a film. Why? Who's complaining? Are we making a lot of noise? No one's complained, but we can hear you all in the galley. Oh, OK, no problem. How about another drink? Sure, I'll get you another drink if you keep your voices down. Thanks for your understanding. Eight point eight. If the situation doesn't get better, then I'll try to find you another seat. If there's still a problem, then I'll come over. If there is still a problem, I won't leave you on your own. I'll get you another drink if you keep your voices down. Eight point nine. Could I ask you a special favour? Would you mind just keeping the noise down a little? Please, could you come over to help me? Eight point ten. Hey, you. Where's my vodka? I've been waiting ages for it. I'm sorry, sir. The bar is now closed. We're not serving drinks. Why not? I've already said, sir. The drink service is finished, sir. The bar is closed. I asked before. I I want another. Vo get me another vodka. I said. Hey, come here. Get me a vodka. Just one moment, sir. I demand that you get me a drink. I asked you for a drink, and you said you were going to get one. That was 15 minutes ago. So I want my drink. Do you hear me? Hello, Tom. We've got a guy in 36D who's had too much to drink and he wants more. He's becoming very aggressive verbally and physically. I think we're going to need the restraining straps. Call Ted immediately. Just to tell him no more. Finished. That's it. I did, and he started shouting. And then he pushed me, almost knocked me over. We have a problem. Tell Ted, please. OK, will do. And I'm on my way. Sir, we can't serve any more drinks. Please sit down, sir. Well, if you won't get me one, I'll go and get it myself. I'm afraid the bar is closed, sir. Please sit down. You have to sit down, sir. Sit down, I said. I'm warning you, sir. Ted, give us a hand to control him. Get him to the seat just there. That's it. I'll strap his wrist to the armrest. Good. Now the other. That will hold him in his seat. He is shouting and swearing. He's not calming down at all. Yes, the situation is becoming serious now. I have to speak to the captain. I think we're going to need to have the police meet the aircraft on arrival. Right. Tom, stay with him. Reassure the passengers the situation is being dealt with. I'll be back in a moment. Right. I'm going to report you for... 8.11. You have to sit down, sir. I have to speak to the captain. You have to stop that now. You have to be quiet. You have to do what the captain says. Eight point twelve. Would you come to the back of the plane with me, please, madam? I can see how upset you are. Can you tell me exactly what happened? I do apologise. Incidents like this are extremely rare. Please don't worry. Everything is under control. 8.13 1 Why are difficult passengers the flight attendant's biggest headache? I think difficult passengers can be... A bit of a headache for flight attendants, mainly because some of the problems that passengers have can't be solved on board. And that gives a flight attendant a real headache because if they're passionate about their, their role on board and that they want to do the best for the customer, that inability to solve the problem can be quite frustrating. So that in itself is a headache for the, for the flight attendant. Another um, headache, of course, is that, you know, passengers 
it can have what we call the halo effect. So once a passenger starts complaining, people around them, around that person complaining, also start to possibly think negatively. And um, so the whole thing can escalate. So when passengers complain, it's a headache, not because the passenger's a nuisance, but partly because if... If it's not solvable, that's that's frustrating. It certainly was for me. My theory and my ethos when flying as a flight attendant was always to to do the best for the customer. I wanted every single passenger to get off that flight having said they'd had the most amazing experience. I never saw a passenger as a headache, annoying problems that I couldn't solve, but I would always try to work with the customer or the passenger to see what could be done. And usually I was able to leave them with a sweet taste in their mouth about the airline, even if the problem wasn't solved at the time. Two. What was the worst experience you had? I remember one particular um, incident that was the worst I remember one particular um, incident that was the worst complaint that I've ever had to deal with. The man in question was flying to Tokyo via our airline. <clears throat> and from the minute he'd boarded the aircraft, he took his seat in business class, he had complaints. He didn't like the seat. He didn't like the menus. He thought the towels that we were handing out were awful. He thought our wine choice was disgraceful and so on. And this was all before we'd even taken off. And, of course, my junior crew were coming to me and telling me about this problem that the passenger was having. And each time I was going out and addressing the problem and sorting the problem out for the passenger. However, things escalated with this passenger in his complaints. He was so unhappy with our flight that um, I had to actually call the captain because even the meal that we offered him wasn't good enough. The wine was rubbish. And then when he tried to put his table away, he complained that the seat in front of him was invading his space. This was in business class. There was just no way of pleasing this passenger and I recognised that he was just, you know, very, very unhappy. I went over to him actually and I sat and listened to him and then he threw his last complaint at me and it was just awful because he handed me this blanket that he had been given and it smelt really bad. It was really damp and there was no excuse, you know, and he had a genuine complaint and it was just the final straw for him he was so unhappy and were manageable I felt that this had this was the one that broke the camel's back on top of that he then complained to me that the stewardesses that had been serving him um, their breath was so bad it had knocked him back 20 paces and there was nothing I could do and I said to him you know He said he hated our airline and he wouldn't normally travel with us. So I said, so why did you travel today, just out of interest? And he said, well, my wife booked the flight. And um, I said, I do understand how you feel and I'm really sorry you weren't able to get your flight with the airline of your choice. I said, and I'm sorry you've had so many poor experiences as you see it. I said, but I would like you to take something home for your wife so that she feels she's not going to be in trouble for giving you, you know... (laughs) such a terrible experience with us. And I went into first class and I got her um, all the goodies that we give our first class passenger, plus a lovely bottle of champagne. I got her a little ladies' wash bag, which had all the top designer, um, you know, moisturisers and makeup and and things like that. And I got her a, a ladies' jumpsuit that the first class passenger has. And I gave her a menu and I filled this bag with goodies. And I said to him, you know, give this to your wife and um, tell her I'm really sorry that you haven't enjoyed this flight, but that, you know, we're not as bad as you have you feel you've experienced. He just hated our airline, and I recognised that straight away. 
And um, do you know, when he got off the flight, he actually shook my hand and he said to me, you know, you're absolutely right. He said, I will never travel with this airline again. He said, but I can tell you now, he said, my attitude towards this airline's flight attendant has been changed dramatically. He said, because you've been so professional. Because I kind of, you know, licked him to, him to death with kindness, really. I was understanding and I, he knew that I understood that he wouldn't travel with us again. There was no point in me upgrading him to first class because that's what we would normally do. But there was no point because, you know, so all I could do was look after him to the best of my ability within the cabin he was in, but also give him some little treats for his wife. And uh, I think he liked that. Three. How do you deal with such difficult passengers? When I first started flying, if you had a nasty passenger, you'd kill them to death, kill them with give them upgrades, give them anything to make them happy. But during the late 80s and the early 90s, passengers became so familiar with travel, it was almost like, you know, just getting on a bus, that they would complain about everything. So suddenly it was the nice people that you would treat because so many people are so unpleasant that when you have a nice passenger you actually say to each other's crew oh that gentleman in 16d he's so lovely we look after people who complain but some people just you know this guy wants he wanted an upgrade this was in the early 90s and he was sitting by some babies and I did sympathize with him because when you're flying um, the last thing you need when you're on a 10-hour flight is the sound of a baby crying and um, so he came up to me but and he said he needed an upgrade because he was very tall. That was his first thing. And I, I sympathised with that. And then I, I looked in business class and we didn't have any seats available. So I wasn't able to move him into business class. But then he started to get angry and then he said, well, I'm not sitting in this flight, on this flight, next to these babies, the whole flight. And I started to think, he's just after an upgrade. But I could see his point. And the seat's pitch isn't great. So I looked at the passenger list and I managed to find him a row of seats where we could actually stretch out for the whole flight. I thought he'd be really pleased with that because, you know, it's great having... But actually he wasn't because what he was after was an upgrade. But I couldn't upgrade him, there was no space. We had no seats available. So I gave him what I thought would be really good. And I could see that inside he was really miffed, you know, because he'd thought he was going to get a business class seat. And uh, unfortunately, I couldn't do that. But you can't please everybody. I think it's very difficult for flight attendants today. Nine point one. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll shortly be landing at Montreal Trudeau Airport. The fastened seatbelt signs have been switched on. Please return to your seat and ensure your hand baggage is safely secured in the overhead lockers or under the seat in front of you. Please also make sure your table is folded away, your seat back is upright with the armrest down and your seatbelt is fastened. Passengers seated in our first and business class cabins Please make sure that your footrest and video screens are back in their original position. If you have been using the in-seat power, we will shortly be switching it off. So please now unplug your laptop and store it in a safe place. Once again, may we remind you that cell phones must not be switched on until the seatbelt signs have been switched off after landing. We hope that you've enjoyed the in-flight entertainment during the flight. In preparation for landing, we'll be switching the system off. It would greatly assist the flight attendants if you could have your used headsets ready for collection as they pass through the cabin. 9.2 1. Please return to your seat and ensure your hand baggage is safely secured in the overhead lockers or under the seat in front of you. 2. Please make sure that your footrest and video screens are back in their original position. 3. If you've been using the in-seat power, we will shortly be switching it off. So please now unplug your laptop and store it in a safe place. 4. 
May we remind you that cell phones must not be switched on until the seatbelt signs have been switched off after landing. 9.3 Thank you so much. Can you open the window blind, please? Brilliant. And put your tray table away. Thanks. Excuse me, I can't find my arrival form. You know, the customs thing? You mean the disembarkation form? That's it. No problem. I'll bring you one in a few minutes. Thanks a lot. Do you want my headphones? Not me. My colleague will collect them soon. Hello there. Put your bags under the seats in front, please. Perfect. Ah, this is an exit row, so everything has to go in the overhead lockers, please. Nothing on the floor at all. OK. Thanks for that. Can I give you these magazines? Sure. Anything else? No? OK. Sorry to bother you. Do you know how long it takes to get from the airport to the city? Yes, I do. By bus, by train or by taxi. Which is the best? To be honest, I'm not sure. We take the company minibus and it takes about half an hour to the city centre. That's not bad. Everyone says the train is the fastest, but double check. Fantastic. Many thanks for your help. Enjoy your stay there. Your seat back, please, sir. Thank you. And your tray table? Good. And sorry, could you take your coat off the empty seat and put it in the locker, please? 9.4 Excuse me? Yes, how can I help? The captain said we were landing 15 minutes ago, but we seem to be climbing again. Yes, you're right. What's wrong? Does this mean a delay? I'm not sure. There might be a short delay. This airport can be very busy first thing in the morning. If there is a delay, the captain will make an announcement. Oh dear. Is there a problem? I have to make a quick connection to Nice. I see. Well, let's see if we can get you off the plane first if there is a delay. Thank you. 9.5 Ladies and gentlemen, this is the first officer speaking. Unfortunately, I have some bad news for you. Air traffic control has advised us that, due to a problem on the ground, we will be delayed for approximately 30 minutes or so. My apologies for any inconvenience, but we'll get you on the ground as quickly as possible. In the meantime, please keep your seatbelts fastened. So there is a delay after all. Do we know why? I'm afraid I can't tell you any more than what the first officer said. Listen, I'm in transit. I've got a connecting flight and not a lot of time. I know. You told me. What time is your flight to Nice? At 10.15. OK. Well, if we land at 9, you should be OK. How long does it take to get to the domestic terminal? I've only got hand luggage and I'm checked through, but I do have to clear immigration in Paris, don't I? Yes, I'm afraid so. It takes about five minutes to get to the terminal you need. Look... All I can say is we'll get you off the plane as fast as possible. Fingers crossed. 9.6 Tom, sorry. Have you checked your side of the cabin? Yes. Good. Could you check Yuta's side for me then? She still hasn't finished the bar paperwork for customs. Oh, right. No problem. Also, she says you took the bar seals out of the bar trolley... Where did you put them? Oh, I think they're in the galley. If you could give them to her, that would be great. By the way, is your side of the cabin secure yet? Not quite. I've still got a bit of clearing in to do, and I've got to put one bassinet away. Okay. Oh, and one passenger is still in the toilet. Right. You'd better bang on the door and get him to his seat fast. Okay. Do that first and clear in the cabin on the way back. Sure, but does Yuta need any help with the c 209s Don't worry, I'll help Yuta. You haven't got time. Okay. Let me know when your cabin is secure so I can give the checks to Hemal. Okay, I've done the customs paperwork. Are all the bars locked and sealed? Yes. Okay, go and help Tom. He's checking your side of the cabin. You could take a tray and clear in any rubbish in the cabin. 
but you'll have to be quick. Okay. Uh, Layla, cabin and galley now secure. Cabin crew, seats for landing. Well done. Just in time. Better grab our seats and strap in quickly. Hemel, cabin secure. Great. Thanks. See you after landing. Nine point seven. Has she done the final checks? No, she hasn't. Have you secured the trolley in the galley? Yes, I have. Have they checked the tables are upright? No, they haven't. Have we done everything? Yes, we have. Nine point eight. One. Is preparing for landing easier than preparing for takeoff? Preparing for landing is more stressful actually than preparing for takeoff because with takeoff you've got just the welcoming of passengers, the safety checks, and the preparation. But coming in for landing, you've got the human factor. You've got people sitting on board. You've got um, drinks and debris that you've. Provided we、well, haven't provided the, the the passengers with debris, but the the meal trays, the drinks, all of that is still possibly out in the cabin. You've got headsets that need to be collected, blankets that need to be collected, landing cards that have to be checked, immigration forms that have to be handed out and checked to make sure that passengers have completed them correctly. On top of that, you've got your checking of seat belts and the securing of the cabin and the galley. So. Coming in for landing is actually quite stressful because there's a lot going on during those final sort of ten, fifteen minutes. You're stowing trolleys, you're securing the galley, you're going into the cabin, clearing in any rubbish. Also, answering questions because people are near their、um, arrival, so they want to now check with you that their flight is on time or their connection is going to be there. Um, they might want to ask you questions about where do they pick their baggage up, and You're doing all of this while you're completing all the other pre-landing duties. So yes, landing duties tend to be a lot more stressful than that those for takeoff. Two. Do you remember any special problems with passengers in the final ten minutes? I don't remember any、um, particular problems with passengers during that final ten minutes of landing.、Um, minutes of landing. Um, but occasionally, if I can recall one, I remember this foreign lady. She had、um, not completed any of the forms, and the crew hadn't alerted me to the to this fact. And as I was going through the cabin, checking the seat belts and checking tables were stowed, etc., the neighbour sitting next to this passenger actually just said to me. You know, this lady hasn't got a landing card, and it was a bit of a panic because, as the senior in charge of the flight, it's my job to、uh, coordinate the landing so that all my crew are doing what they should be doing, and the cabin is is secure. And suddenly, I'd got this lady that nobody had told me about, who didn't speak a word of English, and were we were arriving in ten minutes, and I had no history about her, so. That was a bit of a panic. Three. Can you briefly outline communications in the final phases of descent? The final phases、um, of descent, when the aircraft is preparing to land, sometimes there's minimal communication between the pilot and the the passenger. It largely depends on what's going on. I mean. They may come on to the interphone and just thank the passengers for travelling with them. They may tell them of weather conditions that they're expecting, and of course, they will tell the passengers of local time. Also, in that last ten minutes of flight, the pa- the captain or co-pilot may just advise passengers of、um, any holding. You know, if the flight is being Delayed for any reason,、uh, but generally, it's fairly ke- it's kept to the minimum.
uh, in terms of communication. The captain will have made his announcement 20 minutes prior to landing. That's on long-haul flights. Obviously, short-haul flights, it's slightly different and the, the cockpit do tend to communicate with the passengers a little you know, closer to landing. So they may hear something. Between the passengers and the cabin crew, there's usually a lot of uh, communication going on, particularly on long-haul flights where various crew members may be informing the passengers of... um, the need to have headsets ready for collection. There'll be another announcement usually made about landing cards and immigration forms. And then there's often um, communication from the senior crew member who will be advising the passengers of arrival procedures. And there's yet other announcements preparing the passengers for landing, such as please return to your seats and you need to fasten your seatbelts now. So there's quite a lot of communication going on between passengers and cabin crew, not so much between um, flight crew and passengers. And very minimal communication really between flight crew and cabin crew, other than the need for the cabin crew to inform the flight crew that passengers and galleys are all ready for landing and It's usually kept to the minimum, usually just um, simple sentences such as captain, cabin, now secure, or aircraft, now secure. 10.1 Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the captain and the entire crew, we would like to welcome you to Boston, where the local time is 14.55. For your safety, please remain seated with your seatbelt fastened, leaving all items of hand luggage safely stowed until the seatbelt signs have been switched off. Before you leave the aircraft, please ensure that you have all your personal items and hand luggage with you. Please be careful when opening overhead lockers as items may fall out causing injury. We would like to remind you that smoking is not permitted until you've reached a designated smoking area outside the terminal building. We would also like to remind all passengers that mobile phones should not be switched on until the seatbelt signs have been turned off. As the captain told you, it's very cold outside, so I suggest you have your coats ready for when you get outside the terminal. We wish you a very pleasant stay or a safe journey if you're continuing your journey. We hope to see you again in the future. Goodbye. Ten point two. The entire crew. The local time. Safely stowed. Please ensure. Please be careful. Designated area. Terminal building. 10.3 10.3 Okay, everyone, this debriefing will be short, as I'm sure we're all very tired. As you know, our flight was quite turbulent, but judging by the positive comments from our passengers, you all worked extremely hard to ensure passenger safety at all times. It was also good hearing passengers saying how much they'd enjoyed their flight in the circumstances as they left the aircraft. So, I'd like to thank you all for a job well done. Ted? Thanks, Captain. Yes, in general it was a good flight. However, our flight had two incidents and we should talk about them now. In both cases, our teamwork was not the best. The first incident involved shutting down the meal service due to turbulence. The fastened seatbelt sign came on, which means... Shut down. End of service. service. Everyone Everyone sitting sitting down. down. That's right. So what happened, Leila? Yes, sorry, Ted. I heard the passengers and crew to their seats announcement clearly, and I just assumed my crew would immediately help to secure the cabin and galley. However, I should have checked on my crew. Hemel and Jutta were dealing with a difficult passenger, not realising a sense of urgency. You should have told them to stop. You're right. I should have communicated better with my crew. OK. And what about the coffee pot spillage? Again... We should act more promptly in future as a team to secure the cabin or galley. During the turbulence, one trolley was still in the cabin and overturned. All the coffee pots fell on the floor. OK. What can you do next time should a similar situation occur? 
As soon as I hear the announcement, I won't make assumptions. I will immediately communicate with my crew to ensure they've heard the announcement and understood the instructions. I will then make sure that all in-flight service is halted until further notice is given by you or the captain. I will also make sure that the cabin and galley is secured as clear as possible. Right. It's vital to check your crew have understood any communication via the PA system. So, a valuable lesson learned today. Has anyone else got anything they'd like to say about the flight? OK, then. 10.4 We should talk about two incidents now. You should act more promptly in future. You shouldn't continue serving food next time. You should have shut down the service immediately. You should have told them to stop. I should have communicated better. We shouldn't have been late. 10.5 One. Has the threat of terrorism changed the flight attendant's job? I think the flight attendant's job has changed significantly since the threat of terrorism and this has impacted on their preparation time uh, prior to passenger boarding of a flight. For example, most airlines would allocate 15 minutes for crew to prepare their flight and welcome passengers but that time has been dramatically reduced because of the time that flight attendants are now expected and indeed probably want to themselves check the cabin and check their safety areas. Um, would involve things such as checking every single toilet on board to make sure there are no messages written on mirrors or any packaging stowed. They have to check every single seat and under the seat and in their own interests and the interests of passengers, they have to check the galley areas too. So the threat of terrorism has definitely impacted on the, the role of the flight attendant. Two. When the plane touches down, is that the end of your duties? When the aircraft finally lands, um, it's not quite the end of the flight attendant's duties. Um, we have to ensure that um, all passengers are seated until the aircraft comes to a complete stop. And then, of course, when the doors are opened, it's the flight attendant's job to help passengers disembark the aircraft and certainly those passengers who um, may be disabled or may have special requirements or special needs. Um, we will look after those passengers until all um, passengers are disembarked from the aircraft. Once all the passengers are off the aircraft, that effectively becomes the end of the flight attendant's duties. Three. Is the flight attendant's job the same today as it was in the past? I think the job of a flight attendant today is very different to that which um, used to be the case, say, 20 or 30 years ago. It is very hard work these days, and I think you have to be committed to, to looking after people, you have to be interested in people, and you have to genuinely enjoy um, giving people a, a positive customer experience. So... It is hard work. There are lots of situations that occur that you'll you know, never experience in any other job, but it's a worthwhile job. It's still a highly rewarding one. It's fun, it's exciting, and if you like working with people and enjoy seeing people um, more than satisfied, um, then flying as a flight attendant is a great career.